While I was in the loft the other day, I came across this, which I'd completely forgot about. Um, this is an old computer power supply, uh, and I'd, I'd used it previously in another project. Um, obviously, I need to replace this board because it's pretty beaten up. Uh, but with a computer power supply, what you've got is all the yellow cables are 12 volt outputs. So I can, you can see I split them into the ones come off where it's been in the loft. But I split them into six so I can run six 12 volts, uh, 12 volt outputs to different parts of the cockpit. Uh, and the, the red wires are five volt outputs so that would be perfect for running um, my LED backlighting uh, obviously blacks a uh, ground uh, and the green wire uh, when connected to a black wire is the switch that turns the power supply on uh, so what I'm planning to do with this is to run it up to the master battery switch on the overhead uh, so if I use a um, I don't know what the technical term is double pole I don't know two sides to the switch anyway one side will turn the sim power on and the other side of the switch will turn my actual power on and um, so that you know if I flick that switch off everything will go cold and dark um, at the moment, I've just got it <laughs> very badly twisted together uh, so that when I turn it on at the plug, the power supply does come on. Uh, if I was to part these two wires, uh, the power supply wouldn't fire up because this is effectively the switch. Uh, all the other ones, uh, I've just bundled up and you can see that I that's where I cut the red and black wires from uh, to get my ground 5 volts and 12 volts and the rest uh, I'm, I'm not sure what the orange ones are I haven't put them on the voltmeter but I don't need them anyway these are the ones that I'm, I'm worried about uh, and this is just where I was testing uh, to make sure that it all still worked so I'm going to replace this board, neaten it all up, uh, and this is going to be my main power for my sim now, uh, for running everything. Um, I don't even know what it is, it's a, it's quite an old one, it's 250 watt, uh, 5 volts at 18 amp max, uh, 12 volts. Uh, 12 volts at 0.8 amp and that might be an issue I don't know I have to do some research on that I might have to change the power supply to a, a better one uh, but we'll soon see when I try and uh, I don't really understand electronics to be honest I know this uh, <laughs> A big project to take on when you don't but I've got a basic understanding but I don't understand about wattage and ampage and voltage and what they do and how they work it's just it's all wizardry that's what happens wizardry just in case you're wondering uh, the off-white color of these knobs um, this is for the ethos. Uh, I've done a bit of research on it and apparently the closest uh, humble color to it is satin 166. So that's what I'm using. That's what these are painted in. Uh, it looks fairly close to me. Uh, I was originally going to do them white, but 
I kind of like this color um, and it it seems depending on which bowing you look at uh, they're all different anyway some are white some are gray some are this color they're all sorts of different colors so I don't think you can really go wrong uh, with what color you choose so that's what I've gone with that's Humbrol enamel satin number 166 Okay, so I've just got uh, started on my wiring for the EFIS. Uh, if you've seen my other videos, following exactly the same process as I've done with them. Uh, so the ground wire is coming in from here. It's then linking to the first switch and then jumping to every switch after that all the way through. Uh, I've stopped the ground wire, uh, this ground has then got to jump to the buttons and LEDs of these but I've stopped it there at the moment because I want to get all these wired up uh, in here while I've still got access before I start bringing wires up in front uh, which will stop me getting in there. Um, the ground I've also split uh, from this terminal block to jump over to the ground on my multiplexer uh, and I will run another one over to the ground on this multiplexer and then I think I'm going to have to have another multiplexer here uh, which I'll run another ground to on that one. Uh, these two here I'm not sure if I need them yet I've just put them there just in case I can always cut them off at the end if I don't use them for something so that's where I'm at at the moment uh, now starting to the white wires are my buttons uh, so they're now being wired uh, from pin 0 to 15 so 16 inputs and you also notice that on these multiplexers I put pins on uh, whereas on my MCP I put the wires through the holes and soldered them directly this way is a lot easier a lot less fiddly trying to feed the wires through the holes so from now on I shall be doing this and fitting pins to the multiplexers every time uh, and same as I've done everywhere else once I've finished soldering something uh, I cover it in hot glue uh, to A, insulate it and B, secure the wire so that it can't get pulled and either be pulled off the pin or what would most probably happen is it will snap the pin off the switch completely because uh, they're very, very dainty little pins, easy to break off uh, if you accidentally catch a wire while you're fitting the EFIS or you know pulling other wires through or something like that so it might not be the prettiest solution but um, I could have used uh, shrink wrap but to me shrink wrap doesn't give much uh, security for the wire so I think this way personally is a lot better it just doesn't look as neat but who's gonna see it exactly nobody as long as that part looks pretty that's all that matters uh, I haven't got to be too clean with the wiring on this one because uh, all the wiring is behind the backlighting so you, the backlighting is uh, in here you can just about see it in there look so all the wiring is is behind the backlighting so I haven't got to worry about wires casting shadows or blocking the light anywhere at all so I still try and keep it neat just for you know future troubleshooting purposes but I haven't got to be as neat as I was uh, with some of the other projects I've done. Exactly the same as I've done with the previous project so I'm just adding to the list uh, and what I'm going to do is uh, once I've got uh, a fair bit of this done I'm gonna start typing it up so it's neat uh, just for future reference if I ever get an issue 
I can look to see exactly what um, switch is wired to what on the Arduino. So this is the one I'm working for, uh, working on at the moment, which is uh, multiplexer uh, number four in total. Uh, so it's the first one on the EFIS, uh, and you can see what I've wired to what pin on the multiplexer at the moment. Um, pin four to eleven is um, that's eight pins, so that will be uh, for this switch here, which is an eight position switch. So remember, I said in an earlier video that you have to have. Uh, eight pins running in a line on the multiplexer. Um, so that would be this one here. We'll wire to that multiplexer. Uh, and when you go into SimVim, all you do is click on the picture of the EFIS, uh, click on this button, and it knows it's an eight position button. So it asks you for the first pin. So you would, uh, I would click <coughs> I would click pin number four and it would automatically fill in five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. All right guys, just a quick update on uh, my EFIS, Captain Side EFIS. You can see that I've uh, now got the knobs fitted. Uh, I'm not happy with them uh, and I'm gonna be redoing them. Uh, the reason I'm not happy with them is because my clear top coat has, I don't know, kind of reacted with the paint a little bit. Um, it's gone horrible yellow and it took three days to dry. Uh, it was sticky and horrible for three days. So I've put them knobs on just to show you how, they, how they're going to look. But um, I'm going to be reprinting them, repainting them. And you can see uh, the sort of horrible dirty look on the bottom of there where the um, the clear coat has gone funny. Uh, also I'm not happy with uh, the way I've made the the, the marks for the um, I don't know what they're called just the lines I suppose. Uh, the, the process kind of worked I actually used my a uh, vinyl plotter and cutter to cut them out uh, but I need to find a better way of fixing them on because the stickiness of the vinyl is not quite enough and you can see this one has sort of started to peel up already look so I'm not really sure what way to go on that I'll probably end up just painting them on uh, unless I can find a better way of sticking them down. Uh, but I think over time, they're probably going to, if I stick them on, they're probably going to wear off and peel up and look awful. So I think I'll just go with paint and be done with it. Uh, it's going to be a bit fiddly trying to mask it all off, but hey ho. Uh, been progressing with the wiring as well. Uh, you can see I've now got two of the multiplex boards wired up uh, all apart from two spare pins on the end here which I'm now going to start using because I'm now on to wire in the seven buttons across the bottom uh, I'm now about to add uh, another multiplexer onto there uh, it's just unfortunate that I'm only going to need five pins of it um, but what I may do is share the pins across to where the other ethos will be uh, just to try and make use of the pins so to finish off this unit uh, I've just got to wire the switches along the bottom here so again I've got to link all the grounds together uh, and there's two grounds per switch because there's one ground for the push button and one ground for the LED. Uh, wiring for the LEDs, I'm gonna 
link four together again as I did with the FMC. So the yellow wire coming into here, this one is the positive for the first LED and then the negative from this one will link to the positive of this one and then the negative to the positive, negative to the positive and then the negative will be uh, the other wire coming off uh, to go with this one to create the four. Uh, as there's seven buttons that only leaves me three left so it'll be the same thing the positive if I've already wired on so the negative will link to the positive negative will link to the positive and then there'll be a negative tail coming off to go to the ground but as there's only three switches I will need a resistor uh, because if I put 12 volts to only three LEDs it will blow them So that's where I'm at at the moment. So I'm, I'm now about to do them. So sort of an hour or so I should have this unit finished off. Uh, apart from obviously the, the buttons that I need to, the knobs that I need to remake. Um, but it's not gonna stop me getting it interfaced up and working with SimVim uh, and explain with the Zebo. Hello everybody, I've just finished wiring up the Ephus. I uh, just thought I'd give you a, a quick look of how it's looking now before I tidy all the wiring up completely. You can see there is, for such a small unit, there is a lot going on in there. Uh, I'll try and give you a close up. You can see I've done a little bit of hot gluing in there just to make sure the wires don't get pulled or moved because uh, especially with these little tactile switches the pins are so small and delicate that any slight pull on the wire is going to either break the pin off or you know cause some damage of some kind uh, which would be a nightmare to replace at this stage so it may not look the tidiest but I don't care no one's going to see it uh, I'm more about security than tidiness uh, especially when it's all going to be hidden uh, so these two tails coming off here uh, just the continuation of my backlighting which will run to the MCP uh, the actual power for the backlighting for the Cephas is in this cable loom here uh, so it comes in here uh, runs through the Ephus and then power comes out here to then run onto the next module which is my MCP uh, and then out of my MCP and into the first officer's Ephus when when I can build up the courage to have another go at one of these uh, I think I'm all ephus out at the moment so I'll move on to something else and then at a later stage probably do another Ephus but there's the back of it you can see I've got three uh, input multiplexers there uh, two are full and one has only got uh, I think it's five pins used so that gives me the option to to break it out to something else if I need some extra pins at any stage uh, if I can get away with not using it then I, I won't uh, just one little issue I've got to sort this wire here uh, I have already hooked this Ephus up to the sim at this stage to to check everything works before I go and hot glue everything to secure it all in place and I was having a little bit of a uh, an issue with some th strange things going on. Uh, I call it ghosting. Uh, I don't know what the technical term is, but what was happening was as I was rotating um, the map range, it kept completely jumping past 80. So it would go uh, in the sim as I rotated this round, 
uh, it would go 5, 10, 20, 40, absolutely fine. But when I flicked to 80 on this, the sim jumped to 160. Uh, but the, the funny thing was that when I got round to 640 uh, and then came backwards, everything was fine. So it would come back through the range fine. It just wouldn't go forward through the range fine. Uh, and the same with the uh, map mode. So approach it would do, VOR it would do, but as I flick to map, the sim would jump to plan. Uh, but again, as I came back through the range, everything was fine and I couldn't figure it out. I thought it was an earth problem. I've checked, I spent nearly four hours checking this out, trying to fault find what it was. Um, and you know it's getting really really frustrating uh, another thing that was going on is as you were flicking through the map range in the sim this switch was sort of jumping backwards and forwards um, what it turned out to be uh, was the the signal input for this multiplexer um, it was by pure luck that I found it. Um, something told me just to bypass this. Um, and the first one I picked to bypass it was this signal input. So I, I just put this wire on and ran it straight to the uh, Arduino, uh, along with a, a separate ground and things started to work so i thought well okay i will put the original ground loop back on uh, and everything still worked so that only left uh, the, the wire that's in this that runs to that signal had to be the issue so to check that i then disconnected this one uh, and reconnected the original backup which is this one and all my problems started again uh, and this actually runs through all that mess and it's actually the uh, oh, hang on it's it's on the other half of this plug but it's an orange wire um, and I've looked at the solder connection I've looked at the solder connection on the back of this and I can't figure out what it is or there's, there's nothing looks wrong with the connection um, but it's it's definitely that wire so I'm either gonna have to completely bypass it or try and unsolder the offending wire and resolder it uh, perhaps it hasn't got a full connection I don't know what it is but that was the only problem that I came across uh, uh, so that's the only problem really I've got to sort on this uh, and that's that all complete welcome back everybody to the last segment of this uh, ethos build uh, I'm gonna start this segment by saying a huge huge thank you to Chris Fairbrass uh, I had a nice notification on my phone today to say that I'd had a donation through PayPal. Chris, thank you so, so much. It really does mean a lot to know that, you know, what I'm doing is appreciated. Um, and also, you know, thank you to everyone who's, who's put comments on my videos and given me feedback and praise. It really does mean a lot. Thank you so, so much to all of you. So the last segment of this Ephus build, uh, as you can see, it's all finished, uh, apart from the knobs, which I need to sort out where the clear coat reacted with my fingers and the paint, and it's all gone a brown, sticky, horrible color. So I need to sort that out, but uh, I don't think you really need to see that. It's, it's just gonna be exactly the same, just a bit cleaner and nicer looking. So to uh, to get this ethos working with SimVim, uh, first thing you'll notice when you bring up the configurator in SimVim is everything is blank down this right hand side. Uh, 
and all you need to do is if you've already started to program something you just need to edit your own file so you click on edit and it brings up the location where the file is which is xplane resources plugins simvim the data copy is the one I mess about with and data is my actual file uh, and the one called data is the one that simvim reads so if it's named anything other than data it won't see it so I'm going to open that and you'll see uh, this is my main configuration here so you'll know from an earlier video that pins 2, 3, 4 and 5 are from the MCP so 2, 3 and 4 are input multiplexers and number 5 is the output multiplexer which runs my 7 segment displays on my MCP so the three new ones, six, seven, eight, are for my EFIS. And you'll notice that 16 inputs have been used on six. Seven says 11, but it's not, there's more than that. Uh, and eight, there is five. Um, we'll start with six. You can see what I've programmed here. And these little, I don't know what you call it, arrows, flicks, whatever. Um, when I said in an earlier video that when you wire up a rotary they need to be wired up to pins that are in line with each other uh, you can't jump around with the wires so you can't wire 0, 3, 7, 10, 11 and the reason for that is if I shut that down and bring up the picture of the ethos if I for example do the map range it's an eight position switch and with simvim all it wants to know is what pin the first position of that rotary is on uh, and then it will automatically fill in the rest that's why they have to all be in line um, so to program that you would simply click on that uh, we've wired it to a rotary switch so that's what we click here uh, and here it says series of inputs select first input so for me that would be pin 6 and it would be pin 4 on the multiplexer uh, and when I click that it would put ND map range in pin 4 and then it would automatically fill in the next 7 pins for a total of 8 so I hope that's clear So that's uh, number six. Number seven, down here is the same thing, but for some reason it's missing the little tick marks. That's why it says 11 inputs and not 16. Uh, you'll notice here that there's an empty space at 10 uh, and an empty space at eight. Uh, what these are, are the switch that switches between radio and barrow and inches and HPA uh, it turns out that you only need to assign one side because Simvim knows that if it's not on that side it must be on the other if you get what I mean that did confuse me for a little while uh, I filled in both of these um, expecting it to be a two position rotary switch but it's not it's just a toggle switch so if pin 9 is active, uh, it knows it should be on, say, radio, for example. If it's not active, it will automatically switch over to Barrow. Um, so that, that took a little bit of figuring out, uh, but we got there in the end. So that's, that's uh, a full multiplex of worth. And the final one is just using five pins of the multiplexer. So I've got... Uh, more to uh, 11, 11 positions that I can wire somewhere else if I need to. So once you've done all that, you would just simply save it back to the same location uh, and overwrite your own data file and that would update that. Uh, and then it's just a case of going into the sim and clicking reload config and it would then update with all your new uh, inputs. 
so the actual ethos uh, it is all working I've checked it double checked it triple checked it uh, and what I'll do is I'll just run through and show you everything is working so we'll start up here you can see the switch going between radio and barrow on the ethos uh, in the sim uh, the rotary switch on the outside you can see on the uh, PFD the radio is going up and down and also if I flip this across to barrow you can see it's now gone to barrow also the push button resets it uh, FPV if you look in the center of the PFD you'll see a little circle appearing uh, meters if you look above the altitude on the PFD you can see it's bringing up the height in meters uh, this side barrow inches and hectopascal uh, if I just look down a bit sorry you can't quite see that at the bottom there in green you can see we're going up in HBA and then if I flick it across we're in inches and pressing this should put it in standard which it does uh, so moving down we've got the map mode knob so approach BOR map and plan uh, the CTR push button absolutely fine the range the traffic button and the VOR2 and ADF2 and off and VOR1 ADF1 and off uh, buttons along the bottom we've got terrain uh, POS doesn't do anything uh, in this current configuration in the sim and neither does data at uh, airport we can turn them off and on waypoint yep uh, stations you can see the STA going off and on on the ND and weather again you can see WXR going off and on on the ND so everything is working as it should uh, last thing to show you is backlighting um, it is a bit of a shame that the buttons are in cold white and the backlighting is in warm white but the more I look at it I quite like the contrast between the two uh, what I'll do is just go flip the lights off Just to give you the full effect and it's uh, lit up absolutely superbly faultless okay so that's that's it then that wraps up the ethos build uh, next project will be uh, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Uh, I think it will probably be making the uh, glare shield, glare wings, getting that all put on top of my main instrument panel so I can get the ethos and the MCP mounted. Uh, by doing that, that will also allow me to mount the breakout board for SimVim. Uh, once that's in place, I can then start wiring the back of the main instrument panel. Um, I know you haven't seen the instrument panel yet, that's coming up in a future video. But at this point, all the switches are done, fitted, uh, all the enunciators are in place. It's just sitting there waiting to be wired up. Uh, and also obviously waiting to have the uh, glare shield and glare wings fitted uh, and also the uh, lighting knee board down here um, I've got working blower uh, one of these switches is working to turn the 
blower on. I know that's not what it's for, but it seemed convenient to, to have that control the blower. Uh, the main panel has had all its switches fitted, uh, although not wired yet because I need to do some painting. I've made the knee boards, knee panels. Uh, they'll be coming up in a future video, uh, both captain and first officer side uh, are 90% built. Uh, just a, a quick side note, talking about SimVim, uh, when you run SimVim you'll notice it opens all the safety caps on the switches. Uh, this is a great feature because if it didn't, if it left all the caps closed you wouldn't be able to flick your physical switch and have the switch move in the sim because it's being stopped by the cap. Uh, and the only way around that would be to uh, have to somehow tell the sim to open the cap when you flick a switch and I don't believe there's a way to do that. So great little feature from SimVim just to have all the caps open. Um, obviously you won't be looking at the caps if you're building the full cockpit because you won't have this panel. The view you'll have is that one. Uh, looking out at my lovely scenery. Uh, what airport are we at today? LFCT, where's that? Uh, yeah, there. Th 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 Thoraz? Uh, I have no idea. Just a around I think I, I done a little test flight earlier with my MCP and obviously it's just put me at the nearest airport where I quit quit X plane but there we go that's where we are you can see all the all the nice scenery around here and a nice grass runway but you know, like I said in an early video this uh, this PC is just for testing purposes so I haven't installed any scenery whatsoever because that just slows me down and it's not necessary so that's that's it then guys this wraps up uh, the EFAS video thank you all so much for your comments uh, suggestions praise uh, on all my previous videos I do read and respond to every single comment um, thank you all so much and I look forward to see you in the next one. I am hoping to do some live streams soon. Um, it, I nearly done one last night. You know, I sit here at night uh, just painting something or doing a little bit of wiring or whatever and I just thought it'd be nice to have a chat with some people. Um, I don't know how that'll work out, whether that's something you'd want to see or watch. I, I don't know, but I might give it a try and just see how it goes. Um, you know, you can ask me anything you want about how I'm doing something or if you want to see something you know I can spin the camera around and show you so if that's something you'd like to see let me know in the comments of this video and I'll um, I'll see about trying to do a live stream and having a chat with you so thanks again guys take care see you soon